Hi everybody out there in internet land. Uh, happy Saturday. I just wanted to do a quick little sharing. There's different things that I've gone through and maybe it could help some of you like not get snared by the tricks of the enemy. Um, I know that back when I first got blasted by the spirit because what I used to live under all this like religion. Christianity is just another religion where I uh, went to Christian school and uh, was raised in a Christian home, went to church regularly. But uh, my thinking was that just someday in the sweet by and by I'd be able to enter the sweet incredible glory of heaven once I died and left my body and I went down a long journey of just uh, being miserable and uh, finding my pleasures in the world slash the devil the god the god of this world just living under this dark cloud of just miserable religion, really. But then in 94, I came to the end of myself and the Spirit of God just dropped on me and I had my own uh, Pentecostal experience with the tangible glory of heaven and speaking in tongues and all the gifts of the spirit started to manifest uh, the biggest one discerning of spirits just the spirit world got super tangible but i started experiencing the power of god and healings and signs and wonders and just all of the mystical the incredible encounters with heaven basically and all of a sudden my christianity became super exciting interacting to with the spirit world and, and whatnot. And, you know, I just wanted to make a difference in this world. I was really excited and I was encouraged to, uh, I was told, you know, if I really wanna <clears throat> do this full time that I needed to attend Bible college and learn how to rightly divide the word of God, the scriptures. And uh, I went to the Foursquare Bible College. But uh, I just know that Foursquare, its roots are birthed out of the Pentecostal movement that came forth from Azusa Street with William Seymour, where there was a pillar of fire at times over the building. and creative miracles, teeth growing out, limbs growing out, and uh, groups of, like all at once, like a whole group of people that were lame would be, begin to walk and bones would creatively be popped back into place, just heaven on earth, basically. Uh, but uh, when I went there, it was uh, not, anything like its roots and I just kept but would have chapel once a week and I just kept believing that God would just really show up on the campus but it's what ended up, ended up happening actually towards the end of my time there at the Bible College after it was probably my last year there and I was sitting at the table with the president of the Bible College right and I was really inspired by uh, Reese Howells, the intercessor uh, over in Europe. And he had a campus and they would practice the presence and intercede for the nations. And there was such an atmosphere of heaven on the property that anybody that walked onto the property was overtaken by heaven and would sob and 
have incredible encounters with heaven. Well, I was really inspired by that, and I was sitting at the table with the president of the Foursquare Bible College, and I told him, I said, wouldn't that be awesome if the same tangible, incredible atmosphere that's at those Benny Hinn Crusades was here at the campus on the property? And he looked at me with this intensity, with this anger, and he told me, he said, this is not the place for that. This is the place for learning. And then all of a sudden, it's like reality hit me upside of the face that uh, I felt like that movie with Chris Farley where he falls down the mountain and he looks at the hill he tumbles a long ways. It's either Black Sheep or Tommy Boy. When he comes to the bottom of the hill, he looks at me and goes, what the hell was that all about? But after all of those years at the Bible college, and then I look back at it, it's like, what the hell was that all about? But I'm grateful I met my uh, now wife uh, there and at least now I know how that religious spirit works where you're taught it's basically I call it the worship of the mind it's the 666 where the intellectual natural Paul the apostle himself says to be naturally minded or carnally minded leads to death when you live out of the natural mind it brings nothing but death and you live out of fear but if you live out of the spirit, it's full of faith. And I see it as the 666, where on the sixth day is when man was made. And it's like the Trinity, but instead of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, it's man, 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 where everything is reliant upon our natural earthly reasoning instead of as a child trusting in an infinite all-powerful God and letting him show you the secrets of the kingdom and where you move and breathe and walk with the spirit of a living God. But I do know in my own life that when the glory, when his presence is placed as number one at the top, everything flows the way it should. Life uh, has this deep inner satisfaction. I was talking to my wife about this, like I've never in my life bought any material possession I've never in my life bought anything that really brought true, deep satisfaction. But there's something about the presence of God that satisfies deep to the very core of your being. Well, anywho, I I just wanted to touch touch on that and um, I just want everybody to remember that everything you see came out of his presence and going to the source of what everything that we've been blessed with going to the very source is key to everything the, the presence, the glory living out of that heavy bliss that on the day of Pentecost when the apostles got blasted by the fire of heaven, when they got blasted with the incredible, heavy, drunken glory of heaven, they accused the, the, the naysayers, they accused them of being drunk. And it wasn't because they were speaking in tongues, because if that were the case, 
Okay, how many drunk people do you know all of the sudden become bilingual because they were speaking in known dialects, the wonderful works of God? But they, they really, there were people that honestly thought they were drunk because the, 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 the bliss of heaven the drunkenness of heaven. In fact, historically, there would be monks, there would people just be, they would just live out of the, the wine cellar of heaven. Jesus compares his blood to wine. And in Ephesians, it says to not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the spirit. They keep paralleling the sweet, heavy, atmosphere of God with the wine because it, it it's blissful. It brings deep inner satisfaction. It brings peace. It's the opposite of the enemy that brings anxiety and fears, despair. Um, it's the drunken bridal bliss living in that drunken wine cellar of heaven. And I just want everybody to receive it, just to drink it up. Live out of that place when Jesus, when he cried out, it is finished. That inner veil that goes back to where the ark is, where the glory was over the lid. That curtain was tore, declaring we have access to that sweet, heavy, thick glory. Jesus is our our paradise. He is our heaven. Anywho, I just want to give you that little sharing. I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. And uh, in my description, there'll be like a little uh, PayPal click because I'm trying to raise enough money to be able to go to Reading. And I'm meeting up with some friends and stuff where we're just going to open up heavenly portals uh, at, at, where we're staying in Reading and also at Bethel, taking it to new levels, deeper places in the spirit. Anywho, I'll talk to you guys later. I uh, love you guys.